even though it was refuted by the family of the of the woman's sister in question, like all of this nonsense about how he didn't want to pay for an effing funeral. All of this is such oh God. bull crap. It's it all is. so stupid. Kaylee McEnany um, was on Fox because she'd been involved in some meetings that included John Kelly. No one, of course, reached out to her. The Atlantic is such a useless garbage publication. Um, and here is what Kaylee said. Based on four anonymous sources, mm -hmm. two weeks before an election, 100%. disputed by people on the record, and yet it led a CBS News broadcast. Okay. What a shame. Did they what include a shame. your portion? Did they include? No, they never reached out to me. I was in that first meeting, never reached out to me. But I will say this quickly. Donald Trump, I have <clears throat> never seen him more down trodden than when the suckers and losers story came out. He normally, stuff came out of his, about his finances, fake stories, he didn't care. He was devastated by that story. I remember him saying, what kind of monster would ever say words like that? This is shameful reporting from the Atlantic, well, in my opinion. Well, to the Bob Yep. And it's it's true. Lies, total lies. It's mm -hmm. it's complete nonsense. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised to hear this fellow, his name is Costa. Last name is Costa. I'm not sure if it's first name, but CBS guy, CBS News in Washington, actually saying out loud, why is this story coming out? And he was very honest about it. Why do you think Kelly is speaking up now? Because we are just days away from the presidential election mm -hmm. and retired General Kelly and so many people who worked for former President Donald Trump in the White House are That's speaking face. up with new alarm about the possibility of him returning to power. And there is a sense inside political circles at the highest level that a return of Trump to the White House could lead to dramatic changes in U.S. foreign policy, U.S. domestic policy with his proposal for mass deportations. And there is fear. And the Harris campaign is playing into that a bit by having former Congresswoman Liz Cheney on the campaign trail talking about some of these themes. It makes you wonder what these people have done, that they're so scared of him getting back in office and releasing things like the Epstein list and things like that. We have a new sponsor to tell you about, and this one is specifically about sunscreen from OneSkin. And so if you've never heard of OneSkin, I'm going to read you some stuff about their science because I am not a science person, although I do come from a bloodline of science. scientists. You do. I know. <laughs> I did not get that gene for some reason. <laughs> but this is a company that uses, they have their own R&D platform. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's amazing stuff. They were able to measure the efficacy of age reversal molecules mm -hmm. in their lab. So this sunscreen, um, I, everybody needs sunscreen. If you're not wearing sunscreen on the daily, even if you're not outside all the time, like anytime you're faced with the elements, you should be protected. And what I especially love about this is that there's tint to it because I don't mm -hmm. wear foundation and I don't like, I don't like foundation, but I know how important sunscreen is to wear on your face. And this has just the slightest tint to it, which makes me feel kind of like I'm getting some coverage. Fancy. If you will. She feels fancy. In I do fancy so naturally you can read all about their technology on their website at oneskin.co not com but co oneskin.co and when you use code chicks at checkout of course you're going to get a discount 15 percent off of any product that you get at oneskin with code chicks at oneskin.co check them out as we mentioned the sisters family lawyer um was on Laura Ingram last night and she was awesome, by the way. She's been pushing back against this John Kelly narrative and here's what she said on Laura's show. This piece, I can't even call it a story. This piece, leave it there, was full of lies. I myself spoke to him and I told him certain things. For a matter of fact, I said, I could not speak about the issue, about these things and about these things. And then he says, Nally Kwam said this. And that was not true. I mean, that's what really bothers me. I've worked with both sides of the aisle with producers and reporters and the media for years, yeah. both sides of the aisle. I've never had to deal with somebody that, that just went that low, below the belt, just to get a story out. And it was, quite honestly, yeah. it was wrong. And it was unethical. And I had to take on that position of, I'm going to call him out. And uh, I appreciate honest reporting, yeah. and this is honest reporting when you can put us on the record, when you can have us talk, and you don't have to say things that we didn't say. So thank you, Laura, for doing a good, honest piece here. I, yeah. I, 
I, I just hope that people see it. And then the people yeah. on the left, they won't care. I mean, I, they talk about him being a dictator. They want to pack the Supreme Court. They want to eliminate the filibuster. They want to eliminate the Electoral College. They want to weaponize the DOJ, the FBI, the IRS, the CIA. They want to weaponize all these things. But Donald Trump is the dictator. I feel okay. like I have that in a tweet somewhere yeah. that I'm about to show. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. They want to they want to do all these things. Yeah, this is the thing that they, it's like they I just they're such projectors, you guys. I don't mm. I don't understand. I don't understand how that people believe it. It's it people, is incredible. Right. I don't understand how like how flip-flopped everything can be. I, I don't I just don't understand how people on the left can look at that and go, "Oh yeah, he wants to be a dictator <laughs> on day 1." Like he things were so much better under him. We, there were the wars, everything. And then, you know, I saw a lot of people yesterday talking about how if he gets into office, I think it was like Dana Lash. I saw her actually on a, a show yesterday. I can't remember what show it was. She was on a show yesterday and she was talking about how she has two um, military age sons. And that I thought of, I thought of you. Mm -hmm. Be and I, and honestly, I think of my daughter because my daughter's not exempt either. But I start thinking about how, my God, like people on the left, they have kids. Are they not thinking about like the fact that what if if Kamala gets into office, Liz Cheney will be her secretary of defense? How is that? Oh, my God. Think about it, you guys. That terrifies the crap. That should terrify people on the left. They've got kids. Do they not think about this kind of stuff? Like we can't be the only people that think about this. Is it Laura Ingram? Yes, she was on Laura Ingram. I mean, I, I, yesterday I thought, oh my God, like, okay, so we think about it, but they also have kids. So why aren't they forward thinking like that? Because they're morons. If you, if they're still people who buy into anything Kamala says, they're beyond, they're beyond hope when it comes to having any logic, reasoning, intelligence, common sense. I know I'm supposed to like not denigrate an entire half of the country that is going to vote for her but i don't know how to explain how people can can believe anything she said especially now with all the new plagiarizing accusations i mean she's a stone cold liar right. about everything and somebody said they'll be exempt I, they won't be exempt how can they ex how can they say oh if you vote a democrat you'll be exempt they won't be exempt their kids will be drafted just like our kids you know what I mean? Into these, yeah. if, if wars get out of control, if World War Three happens, which is, listen, to me, that's a complete possibility. If, if Kamala gets into office, these people are nuts. And Liz Cheney's even more nuts. So, I mean, yeah. this is the stuff I think about. And I'm like, how can they not be thinking about this? It's, it's crazy. Um, we mentioned George Conway. And because he, I could not believe. So imagine being the sister of that fallen soldier who, and you're you love Trump and his reaction, his help to your family. He was respectful. He was kind. He was generous in wanting to help cover the costs of the funeral. Imagine being furious at this story being around right now out there in the ether and everyone politicizing your own sister's death mm -hmm. and tweeting that saying this isn't true. Trump has been nothing but kind to my family. And then having George Conway tell you that you're wrong. Oh my God. I, read what he said to her. Oh God, I hate this guy so much. No one is exploiting your sister's death here. This isn't about her. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I know. It's about Trump's sociopathic behavior. He displays it publicly and privately and is contempt for anyone else's lives, including those of men and women in uniform who made the ultimate sacrifice is apparent to anyone who chooses, unlike you, to open their eyes. I... Can you imagine tweeting this to somebody like that? What is this guy? What a piece of, he is an absolute piece of crap. Yep. I oh was my, stunned. I was, I, he's getting, I mean, he's getting absolutely blasted I for wish it. Kellyanne could divorce him harder. <laughs> like, can she divorce him 50 more times? What, how do you, oh my God. Yeah, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible that he would have this level of audacity. You know, it's oh my the you have no conscience. Yeah, it's it's just disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. And you and you look like a wannabe, like what Wayne Newton, and you're not Wayne Newton, sir. <laughs> he looks like if you took Wayne Newton and Kim Jong Un 
and yes. like made them a person, it would end they up being a, George Conway. They had a baby and it's George Conway, only shorter. 